Continuing our Talisman character review, jumping in with the Dark Cultist, one of my favorite characters to draw and play in Talisman. I like the Dark Cultist because the narrative of serving the Dark Gods, it has very much that kind of old school games workshop feel, bringing back a little bit of that Mordeheim type play, but also embracing the random of Talisman, the unique ability of the Dark Cultist to make offerings to the Dark Gods and roll that D6 and see what can happen. So previously, what I pushed up to the channel was a breakdown of the three types of character classes in Talisman. Ones that can modify dice and increase the dice roll or manipulate it or add to it. Characters that have a higher than average starting attribute, which in the beginning of the game you're looking to leverage. And then characters that have a random type effect. And obviously that vlog goes into a lot more detail that you can check out. But the Dark Cultist falls into this third category. It is completely, completely random. And to get the most out of her, we're going to have to embrace that random and utilize that random. Maybe that fits your play style. Um, maybe it doesn't. But it certainly makes for a very, very interesting character to play. So jumping in, starting stats, 2-3, two, 2 strength, three craft. This is one of the lowest starting strength characters that you can possibly draw. It is going to be very challenging to um, increase strength. And from that perspective, utilizing strength against other characters, for the most part, you're always going to be a point or two behind. So that's something to consider if you're thinking about going the strength route to boosting your character. Now, sometimes it works out. You get a couple of boosts. You drink from some magic fountain, you wear some sort of crown, you have some sort of belt, things happen and, and you can boost very, very fast. But what this means is if you're going to go the strength route and you're behind one, two or three points, depending on the other characters in play, what it's going to take to boost that, you might want to focus on craft. And focusing on craft starting at three, okay. That's a start. Some of the other magic-based characters want to start at four. Uh, I consider the Dark Cultist a semi-magic-based character because we're going to explore that in a moment. But her starting stats are a little bit low. So how are we going to boost those? Four life, one fate. That's kind of standard. Um, one fate is also a challenge. One fate is a challenge. Now, whether you go light fate, dark fate, single fate, depends on the expansions. Fate, we want to hold on to. I always want to have ideally one or two in the pocket ready to go. In this case, one, because as I move into the mid game or as you gain certain objects or you want to make something happen, it's important to have a reroll. Characters that have a fate of three or four or uh, more fate ability or ability to replenish fate, then you can utilize it um, a little bit more aggressively or use it in places where roll a d6, you know, five or six, I gain something, I roll a three, maybe I roll it again. A perfect example of why you always want to have one fate in the pocket. Dance with Death, if you're playing with the Grim Reaper expansion, they send the Reaper at you, it lands on you, you roll that one, you at least want to get a re-roll. Now in true Talisman, one kills you with the Reaper. True Talisman fashion, you can re-roll or re-roll and get that one, and well, you can't re-roll or re-roll. You can roll a one, burn a fate to get a re-roll, roll it again, and get another one. So that's that's always a possibility there. So one fate means, for the most part, I'm going to be holding that um, in reserve. It's not something I can utilize for the chart. Now let's talk about the chart, because this is the random. Because so far, you're saying, Fritz, I'm not seeing it. I hear you, but lower than average starting stats, average life, one fate, uh, there better be something interesting to make up for this. Well, Embracing the Dark Gods, rolling on that chart. Anytime you defeat an enemy or you defeat a character causing them to lose a life, you get to roll on this chart. And uh, you possibly get to augment the chart if it's a good type character, which we can explore that in a moment. On the chart, Fate, Gold, Strength, Craft, Spell. Right away, right there, the chance for strength and craft is going to boost you. That's, that's nice. That's what I kind of want to roll either way. I want to definitely boost and push that forward. Now, this is in addition 
to utilizing the trophies at some point to also trade in. So we're going to get that synergy going. If I roll a one or two, fate and gold, well, the fate, I'm not going to be able to replenish past. Um, that's mildly useful if for some reason uh, I burn the fate and I don't want to replenish it. As for the gold, one gold, I mean, in, in many ways, gold is everywhere in Talisman. Like you're wandering the countryside everywhere there's two bags of gold. Uh, gold is absolutely important. The way of gold is very important. But there are more efficient ways to get gold than to just roll on the chart for the blessings of the dark gods. But it's there. And of course, a spell, a chance to constantly replenish or increase your spells. Uh, that's why she is somewhat the path of magic as she develops in her dark gifts to the dark gods. Um, and finally, you're not going to have to worry about alignment switches. That's That depends... Um, Later in the game, I mean, it can be useful. One of the tacticas is a character, with the exception of the druid, a character that has some powerful objects based on alignment. If you can force them to switch their alignment or they switch their alignment based on the game with drawing some cards, uh, they immediately lose those objects. That could potentially be a problem. So the Dark Cultist, what are we looking to do right away? Let's assume we are playing with the four Big expansions and the smaller expansions, when I play Talisman, I tend to jump in with all of them. Uh, certainly, if you're playing the digital, you're going to utilize all those expansions. I'm heading into the Highlands first. And uh, I say the Highlands because, without any spoilers, there is a good amount of lower level encounters there. Um, Strength one, craft one, strength two, craft two. You know, of course, there's some dragons and some giants and some other crazy stuff. But there are lower type encounters there that, as a start, are easier for me to defeat. And then I'm going to get a roll on that chart. I'm also going to hopefully try to get some gems, get some gold, so I can later turn that in on the city and, and utilize there. But that's, that's kind of the, the level up because I just need to get a few rolls on that chart and start boosting my strength and craft or strength or craft. And then from that point where we move depends on where the game utilizes. So she is weaker in the beginning, but rolling on the chart, there are opportunities for strength and craft and spell, and then pushing that forward. In terms of the base game itself, um, because there's also a number of lower level encounters in the base game, what I find is uh, the, the primary board, none of the sideboards like the city and the dungeon. If you mix in the smaller box expansions, so if we're putting in the Reaper, if we're putting in um, other aspects of the game, it increases the card count tremendously on the main board. Now, normally that's a good thing because I want to have a lot of different encounters and have a lot of different fun, but the base game itself has a nice mixture of low, medium, and high strength and craft encounters, as soon as you start mixing in the expansions, which is a good thing, uh, that gets diluted a little bit, and it gets kind of skewed more towards the mid and the higher tier encounters. That makes it a little bit difficult for the Dark Cultist in the beginning, because the last thing I want to do is fight some encounters and lose them, and not only not get that roll on the chart, but take a damage to my health. One of my favorite characters, I, I like the random, I like the narrative, but she is definitely a character, if you're going to play her, you have to be okay with really accepting the random of Talisman. But hey, we're sitting down to play the game from that perspective. 